Conservation of momentum. That's when the momentum's the same. All right, so today we're talking about conservation of momentum. And we're gonna start off by talking about conservation just in general. We've talked about conservation laws. There are a lot of times used in physics. We started off talking about conservation of energy last unit. In this unit, we're gonna talk about the conservation of what else? Momentum. So the first thing we can think about is some simple situations where uh, some stuff starts off with zero momentum and later we can look at what happens, how it changes. The first thing we're gonna look at is a cannon. So you can see here we've got a cannon ball inside of a cannon and here the cannon, cannonball has been launched to the right. And let's, take, let's think about this. At the beginning, the cannon and the cannonball are at rest. The cannonball shoots out and it has a pretty large momentum because it's a small mass maybe, but it's got a lot of velocity. Shooting off to the right, there we go. So the momentum for the cannonball has changed. So what do I mean about momentum being conserved? How is the momentum staying the same here in this case? Because it looks to me kind of like it isn't. And what's really happening is while the cannonball shoots off to the right, what's actually happening is that the cannon shoots off to the left with a small velocity as the cannonball goes launching off to the right with a very large velocity. This is a thing called kickback and it happens in guns, it happens in cannons, it even happens when you throw something that you go back a little bit at the same time. And this is what's happening with conservation of momentum. If you think just a little bigger and include some other things, then you'll see that the conservation, that momentum is actually always conserved. And you know, you might think, well, what the heck is that supposed to mean? But if you really increase it to the, to the scope of the actual whole universe, uh, there's a statement that the, the momentum of the universe is constant. It doesn't change at all. For anything in the whole universe, if one thing starts moving this way, this, there has to be a momentum in the opposite direction that's generated at the same time to cancel it out. But we're not gonna think that big because the equations get very long if you include every single thing in the universe. Instead, we're just gonna think about two, three, four, something like that, small number of objects in our systems. And to start off with, let's think about two billiard balls. So I've got the number one and the number two, and if they were to collide into each other, let's sort of see what would happen. So as you saw, we've got ball one rolling along, collides into ball two. It'll make a little noise, they'll click, they'll bounce off each other, ball two will keep going on to the right, and ball one stops in this case. So we can talk about what happens with the momentum. So here we see for ball one, it has an initial momentum of P1 sub I. And at the end, it's got an initial, a final momentum of P1 sub F. The other ball has P2 sub I and P2 sub F as the initial and final momentums. So if we look at this as from a system point of view, we've got to think, what is our system? We can actually define three different systems in this case. The first one is just ball one. We've got two others. We've got a system that just includes ball two and a system that encompasses both of them, includes them all together. Let's take a quick look at the momentums for each of these systems at the beginning and at the end. So we get ball one, has a momentum of P1 initial, and actually P2 initial is zero because it stopped moving there. And at the beginning, uh, ball two is stationary, so its initial momentum is zero. So we look here, this one has an initial momentum, no final momentum, no initial momentum, but it does have a final momentum. But if we look at the whole system all together, what we do is we add these two momentums together, like we did with those duck and the goose, and we get a total momentum. We add these two momentums together, we get a total momentum. And we can look for this system, and we can say that the momentum is actually conserved, that it doesn't change. And I'm saying that for this, this statement, that sort of is our statement of conservation of momentum, is that the initial momentum is gonna be equal to the final momentum. So in this case, 
we get that P1 initial is equal to P2 final, and that the momentum of these objects are conserved of the whole system. Now, I've made that statement that we can use conservation of momentum for this situation, and, but you can't always use it. So let's talk a little bit about when you can. So the first case is that momentum is conserved for closed systems. We talked a little bit about systems, and really that's just a collection of objects that you put together, and you consider it one thing. And when we say a closed system, what that really means is that there are no external forces, no forces from the outside. This is what we're going to use for most of our momentum stuff. And when we talk about these two balls, the billiard balls colliding into each other, there are no external forces. The only net forces on the object are the forces from one on the other. And that would be considered an internal force. So that's our big distinction here is these external versus internal forces. If we think back to our billiard ball uh, example, that would be the two balls. Whatever force caused the first one to move, that would be an external force. So before that point, momentum is not conserved, but after that external force goes away, the momentum of the whole system will stay the same for the rest of time until there's some other external force acting on it. So that's, that's the main time that we can use conservation of momentum, but there's a couple more. There's really one specific time, which is actually called, uh, we say is for collisions or explosions. So collisions and explosions are the things that we really deal with the most in these sorts of momentum problems. Uh, however, there is something about this uh, which is actually called the reason that we can do this, even if there are external forces, we can still use conservation of momentum because of something called the impulse approximation. I'm gonna write that down here for us. So we've got this, the impulse approximation. During the short time interval of a collision, because a collision has a short time interval, the force of impact is much larger than all external forces. Therefore, we can consider the other forces to be negligible. So this means that the net force is pretty much equal to just the impact force. We can ignore all those other really small forces and only use the impact force. So what this really means is that during a collision and only during that collision, you can ignore all of the external forces. We pretend like there are no external forces. So during, for that short moment during a collision or an explosion, we treat it like it's a closed system, even if there might be some small external forces on it anyway. We'll explore that a little more in class. So that's sort of our, our rough idea of when momentum is conserved. These two situations, if there's no external forces or during a collision for the short period of time during the collision. Uh, we're going to do a practice problem here, just a, an example. But first, I'm going to ask you a question about this. We've got a ball, let's say we have a tennis ball that is being dropped. And I want you to tell me if this is, if momentum is conserved. Yeah, so if the ball is falling down towards the earth, its momentum is changing. So its momentum is not conserved for the system of just the tennis ball. However, if you zoom out and consider the system of the tennis ball and the Earth, as the tennis ball falls down, it acquires some, lar some large velocity. And as it falls down, it imparts a force on the Earth, a gravitational force up, and the Earth technically accelerates up and moves upwards with a very, very small velocity. So if you consider the ball and the Earth, momentum is still conserved, even for that system, because that would be a closed system with no external forces. All right, now let's take a look at a problem where we calculate some velocities and things using this conservation of momentum idea. Okay, so we've got this problem. It's a big brother coming home from college. His little brother hasn't seen him in a long time. They're running towards each other. There's a big frozen lake in between them. Don't worry, it's a happy ending. 
nothing, no ice breaks. They're running towards each other, and this is, we're going to treat it like a perfectly frictionless surface. There's no friction, which means that there's going to be no net external force. So that means it's a closed system, if we consider both brothers together. So, they're running towards each other, both at a certain velocity, and they step onto the ice, and they start sliding across the ice towards each other. We get to a point where the big brother catches the little brother, they hit each other on the ice, and they come to a complete stop. So their final velocity is zero. The initial, the big brother has an initial, well, has a mass of 70 kilograms. The little brother has a mass of 40 kilograms. And the little brother has an initial velocity of 2.8 meters per second to the left. So let's try to figure out what was the big brother's initial velocity. We're going to have to talk about momentum being conserved. It's the same at the beginning as it is at the end. So let's do some quick calculations on this. Okay, so we've got here the initial momentum. This is the equation we're going to use basically for conservation of momentum, that the initial total momentum is equal to the final total momentum. And we know that's going to be mv plus mv for both brothers is equal to mv plus mv for both brothers. And we said that the final velocity was zero, so on the right-hand side of this equation, it's just going to be equal to zero. All right, so let's figure this out then. This tells us now that for these two to add up to zero, they should actually be equal and opposite. So that's the step we can do here, is we can calculate the little brother's momentum to the left, say the big brother must have the same momentum, but to the right. All right, so here we go. But before we go, I just noticed I actually made a mistake in this. We're going to consider to the right the positive direction. So the little brother's velocity is actually negative 2.8 meters per second because he's moving to the left. Okay, now if we solve, we need to do bring this to the other side, divide by 70 kilograms, and we get. got 40 kilograms times 2.8 meters per second. That's to the left, but there's a negative because we brought it over to the other side of the equation, divided by 70 kilograms, and we get 1.6 meters per second to the right. So that's conservation of momentum. Hopefully this makes some sense. If it doesn't, please bring your questions in the class tomorrow. I'll see you there. Conservation of momentum, you know when momentum's conserved, yeah.